Hey everyone, this is Erin and today I'll be recreating this piece of concept art made by Mary Blair for Disney's 1951 Alice in Wonderland. Ah, and I have, <laughs> I have some bright colors here. I'll be bringing out a few more later. My palette, some brushes, a dry brush, and I have water, of course. And I'm working on some black watercolor paper. And I'm working from this very cute piece that will be pretty quick and simple to do because as some of you know, I'm uh, experiencing the busiest time of my life. I have so much going on this month that uh, I really had to pick something that would be quick. So this is a, a great one to follow along to or try out if you've been waiting to try one of these. This is, this is the one. This one is going to take very little time um, and not a lot of colors. You can also, um, you can substitute the colors that I'm using for pretty much any pink will do. In fact, when I started mixing this, I started with white primary magenta and um, just a small amount of true red. But as I was mixing this, I realized um, that I have a color called Opera in my supply box. And so right now, see, ah, I'm like, hey, woohoo, I have Opera. This is a, a fluorescent pink. I love it so much. I have like five tubes of it because <laughs> I use it all the time. And so now I'm stoked because this is going to bring a much brighter pink uh, to the scene and probably, well, not probably, but for sure brighter than the original piece of concept art. But like, whatever, I'm, I'm going with it because I knew it would look so good. Um, so I'm mixing in some white with my opera. And then I have the mixture that I've already made and I will use that less bright pink mixture um, to put down a coat underneath the sun because the sun, I think it's the sun, feels like the sun with a black background, which is so cool, but um, the sun is a super bright uh, red. So it's a good idea to put an undercoat, even white would have been good, but I have this pink made. So yeah, here I am just making sure I have enough of this bright color to do all of that dry brush effect, the, the sun rays, and yeah, just mixing it up. Now, as a lot of you know, you want to continue mixing just a little bit of water into your gouache mixture so that it can be nice and creamy and smooth like melted ice cream. Mm. And then I've got a extra piece of paper here just to test my colors out on. And uh, here we go with the dry brush. So doing a little test run here, uh, dipping my brush, which is dry into that mixture. And um, what am I doing? Oh, I guess I'm starting off with uh, doing the, the sun first, like the background of the sun. So here we are painting a circle. Now, a circle isn't the easiest thing to paint. You'll see that this probably takes more time than anything else in this entire painting is painting uh, a, as close to a perfect circle as I could make. Uh, so I suggest using a circle template or, you know, find something around your house that is circular, <laughs> which would have been a, probably a good idea for me to do too. But I was, you know, I'm just, I'm winging it. I'm going for it, trying to do this as quickly as possible which is funny because it would have been so much quicker had I used a circle template. <laughs> uh, but oh well, at least this way you get to see my technique, which is spinning the paper around and around, <laughs> seeing where it needs to be thicker until finally I make a circle that I'm somewhat pleased with. Uh, but while I'm doing this, since this takes forever, I'm going to talk a little bit about Mary Blair's important role in uh, the creation of Alice in Wonderland because Walt Disney had almost given up on the idea. He was actually obsessed with creating an Alice in Wonderland feature um, since he was quite young. Like it went back to the 1920s when he worked for Laughogram Studio in Kansas. And he actually created a, a short feature that was both live action and animated, sort of like Roger Rabbit. Like the main character was a little girl within an animated world, but the release um, didn't happen because Laughogram went bankrupt. Anyway, and then for years he, you know, he tried to reimagine what this Alice in Wonderland feature would be like. He actually did a, a series of shorts called Alice Comedies, which ran throughout the late 1920s uh, when he first formed Disney Studios with his brother. But eventually, um, when it did come time to make Alice in Wonderland, he was really frustrated because all of the concept art and all the storyboards felt 
flat. They felt too dark. They didn't really fit the tone that he wanted. Um, and then he thought of Mary Blair. She had been working for Disney earlier. She had left to do some of her own work, but he was reacquainted with her through this trip to South America that she went on with him and a bunch of other animators. And he was like, she's the one. She needs to come on board and do some of her like whimsical, um, you know, very bright, colorful illustrations. And when she came and worked with him on Alice in Wonderland, it completely like inspired him and got him super excited. And he was like, OK, this project's on. We're doing it. And um, this scene that we're that I'm painting today is of the um, the walrus and the carpenter, which might not have even made it into the film uh, had he not seen this actual painting because well, not this painting. <laughs> he didn't see my painting, but uh, Mary's piece, um, it it blew his mind. So he talked about how she, you know, she had this unique vision and she would make choices that no other concept artist was making at the time and so creating this piece on a black background you know but it it's meant to be daylight this is meant to be the sun that's shining this pink spotlight on the walrus and carpenter and uh, for her to choose a black background and you know reds and hot pinks um, was yeah it was I guess very, very inspiring for Walt. So, uh, and, and this scene made it in instead of uh, the Jabberwocky bit, which, you know, it's surprising, right? I, I guess he didn't, he, they couldn't put everything in because there was so much that happens in the uh, original stories. Um, but this one made it in because of Mary's incredible talent. Uh, I'm painting the sort of the, the spotlight sun stage. <laughs> I'm going to call it, that the walrus and carpenter are walking along. And I've used the mixture, uh, the opera pink and white mixture. Um, but then I looked, I really looked at the original piece and I realized that that area was sort of modeled. There's variations of the pink. So I'm mixing some more opera, uh, just darkening it up a little bit or making it a little more saturated so that I can create a tonal variation otherwise known as modeling. There we go. Just add some visual interest there. Some nice texture. Very nice. And next up, we're going to do some dry brushing. So this part, um, I'm not totally in love with how I did this. I feel like I, yeah, I should have tested it out um, more, but you know, this texture that we're seeing is really lovely. I, I used a brush that was completely dry and <laughs> the handle was wobbly and long. Um, <laughs> nobody wants a long wobbly handle um, so I broke it off but the problem here is that I didn't add any water at all to my brush. I, it's completely dry but also the paint was quite thick and so what happened was I had to press harder so that the paint would deposit to the surface and in pressing harder I deposited too much paint. You can see there. So. I, I wish more of the black was showing through and uh, yeah so that was that was a little bit of a mistake but you can learn from my mistakes so I suggest yeah having your brush be just a little bit wetter or the paint just slightly um, smoother and then I, I changed it up to my acrylic brush here or not acrylic brush but uh, my watercolor brush which is softer and I added a little bit of water to the brush uh, so that I can get these softer finer lines and there are the sun rays emanating from the red the red sun and after I did this I realized oh shoot I'm gonna have to repaint the sun again so that it's bigger so that it can um, so that it meet, meets the edges of those sun rays so here we go back to painting a circle I've shared this tip before but I'll share it again I love sharing a tip, but uh, you should probably start smaller when you paint a circle. Always start with a yeah, smaller shape so that as you perfect it, it gets bigger and eventually you'll sort of, you'll hit that mark and you'll say, okay, this is, this is right. But if you start bigger and you keep going bigger, then it'll end up way too big. So always, always start smaller. That's, that's my hot tip. And just adding a little tiny bit to the sides here so that it really looks like it's 
lining up there with the edge of the sun. There you go. Now, as usual, I'm somewhat impatient. I want to get to the next part, which is painting the sun. And so I get out my luminous red, which is really the best color. I mean, I say this about a lot of colors, but luminous red is so hot and fun to work with. Um, it's a warm red, so it's closer to orange on the color wheel. And I'm adding some white to it just to, just to give it a little more opacity. And then I'm adding some true red to it to give it more depth. And mixing in just a little bit of water so it's nice and creamy. And it's, it's a gorgeous color. It's just, yeah, fantastic on black paper. And I'm starting with, um, with the waves through the spotlight area, so through the ground, because the sun part is definitely not dry yet. Um, and so we're going to start down here on top of the pink, getting rid of the excess here because I do want a little bit of that dry brush te texture. And as I'm looking at this now, I'm realizing something that I didn't realize when I was painting it, which is th these red waves are actually the waves. So <laughs> um, let me try to explain what I'm, what I'm thinking here is that the waves in the background are blue. And as they go through this spotlight, the, the sun rays, they turn red. I think that's so cool. Wow. I didn't realize that before. Um, but yeah, the walrus and carpenter are walking through the shoreline and they're walking through these illuminated waves. It's gorgeous. Uh, added a little bit more opera to my dry brush here to um, accentuate the sun rays, which I don't think I should have done. I regret that because it's, it's creating an imbalance, a visual imbalance between uh, the ground and the sun rays. The sun rays should have been a little more subtle, but I was, you know, I was excited about opera. It's such a fun color to work with. But yeah, it didn't ruin it, but I do regret it. And now I'm about to do the sun, but then I realize that it's just not dry. Like if you, you know, you pick it up and you tilt your page, you can see that it's still shiny. And I've learned over the years to just try to be patient. And most of the time I'm not, I'll just go ahead and paint right over it and then kind of ruin the color uh, because it'll blend with the color underneath. So I decide in this case to start working on the moon, the stars and the waves. And I'm using ultramarine blue, which is a warm blue, which means it's closer to purple on the color wheel. And uh, yeah, adding in a little bit of white. So certain colors have more opacity just naturally. Um, red sort of in the middle. Red is is quite opaque but it's not as opaque as ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue really doesn't need the help of white to make it opaque. However, if I didn't add white to it, it would have been too dark. So I needed to heighten the value a little bit. So when you add white, you're, you're um, heightening the value and it'll show up a lot a lot more on the black paper so especially when painting on black paper ultramarine will dry very dark uh, so a little bit of white in there and now i'm lining up where the moon is going to be and here we go now I, you know i forgive mary for this but if this was if this wasn't a surreal piece if this was accurate then the moon would be illuminated on the other side but that's okay we're, we're not gonna we, we won't be upset about that um, painting this moon was really was really fun. Nice thick crescent moon. And you can see how the ultramarine dries. Uh, when it has the white uh, mixed in, it dries a little bit lighter. Really nice and bright on that black paper. And again, spinning my canvas around so that I can get that curve evened out. Looks pretty good. I love a crescent moon. It's my favorite. When it's even thinner than this, when it's just like a little thin, like fingernail of a moon. Um, yeah, doing the stars next. So the stars, I had to add a little more water so that it's a smoother mixture so that I can um, create like a finer point. But what's great about these stars, like everything else in Mary Blair's concept, um, concept art, is that they do not have to be perfect, right? They can be a little bit like sort of rough and the strokes do not have to all be the same like you know uniformed shapes uh, you just you can get a little bit quick and gestural with them and yeah they're fun 
fun to paint. That one's <laughs> a little clunky, but that's okay. Clunky is good. It adds character. And I am I am trying to do them <laughs> thin and small, but yeah, the it's you know, yeah, not if they were all so perfect and small and thin and then they just they wouldn't have the character that they need to have. Um, but I do roll my brush so that I've got a nice thin tip and then also holding it really close to the end of the bristles helps. And, uh, and that one's cute. <laughs> that star looks like it's wearing pants. Look at its little pants. Very cute. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Uh, okay, so <laughs> next up we're going to do the horizon line. Uh, again, adding water so that it's a smooth line so that I can go straight across. And uh, behind the, actually behind the sun rays there, there are, in the original piece, there's like a white or a light pink line representing the horizon line. I didn't add that in. I'm sorry. But imagine it's there. Um, and yeah. So the next part, these waves, I wanted them a little bit thicker, so I didn't add water to the mix. And I'm pressing lightly and then then pressing, like putting more pressure on the surface so that I get these thicker lines. And then easing up on the pressure to get the texture at the end, that dry brush. And uh, yeah, this was fun, this last one. Ooh, that one's good. So much texture in that wave. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's so great. A, a limited palette like this with just the ultramarine and the pink and red, it has so much impact, right? It's so dramatic with the, the contrast with the black. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And now we're ready to do the sun, finally. Finally, using luminous red, it's such a great color. Um, and I think the sun was a little bit wet still, but I go for it. And it does pick up some of the paint underneath, but you can't tell in the video. Uh, but yeah, I, I would recommend waiting a little bit longer than I did. And also you can use a blow dryer. However, here's a good tip. Um, if you're using titanium white, titanium white tends to crack if it's thick. And if you use a blow dryer and you dry it very quickly, it, it could crack. So. I kind of just stay away from a blow dryer when I'm using titanium white, but um, yeah, there it is. Look at that. It's like vibrating. <laughs> ah, okay. Now we get to do the walrus and the carpenter. So I'm using primary black and I'm adding more water than I have to any of the other mixtures because I want... Um, I want it to be really smooth when I do these small detailed bodies because the, there's a lot of gesture happening. There's a lot of nuances in these, in these details. So we're going to start with the walrus. And the walrus is wearing a very cute little jaunty hat. So let's put in the hat. And you can see I'm using a much smaller brush now. So this is a number three. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's great. And I really love the shape, the way this walrus turned out, I think is, I'm, I'm very proud of it. This, especially this back flipper. See that little flipper? See that? Oh, so cute. It's sort of reaching back. It's getting ready to hold the carpenter's hand. And then the belly. Oh my God. I just love a belly. And then the little, wait till you see the little legs. Oh, so cute. Yeah, Mary Blair was a master at creating so much character and and gesture in these very simple shapes these nuanced shapes that little upturned foot love it it's like it's kicking it's it's like it's kicking its heel a little bit like dance walking uh yeah fantastic yeah the notes need to be a little bigger there the walrus snout do walruses have snouts yeah right okay and the carpenter the carpenter is like reaching up they're about to hold hands. I don't know if there's a love affair. Is there a love affair there? I, th I think so. Let's, let's imagine <laughs> that there's, there's definitely love between the walrus and carpenter. And the carpenter was tough. I have to say, like, I, I kind of forgot my own, my own method of 
simply copying the shapes and not really thinking about what I'm painting um, because I did start to think about the carpenter and like the fact that he has one leg back and one leg forward and he's reaching up with his hand and as soon as I did that I kind of lost the gesture whereas I when you're replicating you want to really focus on just copying the shapes as close closely as possible because Mary knew what she was doing um, but I do sort of I, I fix it up a little bit I love the face that that sort of like um, overbite it reminds me of of uh, Bart Simpson and then the cute little walking stick and there they are sort of dancing off into the sunset now I thought I was finished here and I was really proud of myself <laughs> I was like here we are all done and look at them they're in love and it's adorable um, gave them some boops and then realized I forgot one of the most important elements of this entire piece I think this is you know, aside from the, the sun rays, this is probably the most important element as far as the drama. And those are the shadows, these elongated shadows. Uh, they're so beautiful. And again, I'm using this thinner brush, but pressure. So less pressure, you get a nice thin line and then you press down to get the thicker lines, this sort of calligraphic effect. Um, and these shadows just... They're like icing on the Mary cake. <laughs> yeah, so cool. And the way they sort of wave, just adding movement. You really feel like these little characters are skipping across the sand or across the waves. It's just such a fun little piece. Okay, so here we are at the end, and thank you so much if you've watched uh, this far. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It helps a lot. And uh, let me know if there's any uh, concept art that you'd like me to try replicating. Yay, there they go, walking off into the sunset. Um, thank you so much for watching. Go check out Alice in Wonderland, and have a good one.